So now that we have our SOA domain created, the next thing we're going to do, the next lab we're going to run through is starting up JDeveloper. And then I'll show you how we can hook JDeveloper into that SOA domain that we just created in the previous lab. So go ahead and open up a terminal window if you're in Linux. And JDeveloper actually comes with your SOA installation. So when you installed SOA 12C using the Quick Start install, you got a copy of JDeveloper with all the plugins enabled for developing SOA composites, Beeple flows, and service bus proxies. So JDeveloper is actually located underneath your Oracle home directory. Okay. So this is where I am on my system. There should be there is a JDeveloper subdirectory in here then jdev slash bin. Okay, then it's just dot slash jdev to run the shell script to launch jdeveloper. In Windows, and let me switch over to my Windows VM really quick. When you ran through, let me get this into the window. When you ran the Windows installer, it actually created an icon in Windows 10, it actually shows up here but it actually installed a shortcut in your start menu for JDeveloper Studio. So a little, little easier to launch in Windows. Um, you can launch it right here as well. So after you run that, you'll be presented with this screen, okay? And what we wanna do in order to add an application server, we have to go to Windows or Window and then Application Servers. And what that'll do is it'll, it'll uh, pop open this tab here with the application servers that are configured for use within JDeveloper. So right click on this and select new application server. And you can see here you've got two options. You can configure a standalone server or an integrated server. Recall that I talked about an integrated domain in the earlier lecture in lab. That's what this integrated server is. This will essentially be a SOA domain that JDeveloper controls and manages. So make sure you select standalone server and click next. And then we're gonna just give this a name. So I'll call it my quick start SOA domain. You can call it whatever you'd like. Make sure the connection type is WebLogic 12 and then hit next. And then the username and password are the at, are the credentials that were used when you created your so do, so domain. So in my case, it's going to be WebLogic one two three for the password. Then hit next. And then host name and port. This is pretty typical stuff. So I have J Developer running on the same machine as my so domain. So I'll just use localhost here. Port seven thousand one. You can set up SSL. It's out of scope for this lab. Since we're running locally and it's in my own environment, I, I don't care to have SSL configured, so that's fine. And then the name of the domain. We did not change this in the previous lab, so we'll keep this as base domain and click Next. You can go ahead and test your connection if your admin server is running. So I recommend that you start your admin server prior to launching JDeveloper so you can test your connection. And you should. So you can see here, it tested all the various components, the SOA components, and we've got some success, so that's great. So go ahead and click Next, and then Finish. And that's all there is to it. So if you have a SOA application that you're developing, then you'll be able to deploy that SOA application directly to your SOA domain from within JDeveloper. You don't need to build it yourself, export it out of JDeveloper, and then deploy it to WebLogic directly. You can do that all from within JDeveloper.